and welcome to Crushing Comics. I'm your host and obsessed collector, Peter. And I'm here with my wall of bales of comic books. So here's the story. I had this massive shelf, not unlike this one, back in the States. I live now in Wellington, New Zealand. And uh, the movers were quickly approaching the room as they were packing our house. And I thought, how am I going to get all of these Marvel omnibuses and other uh, OHCs and omnibuses safely about 8,600 miles around the globe on a ship for six weeks. So I just kind of bailed them up the best that I could in these, uh, in these bales of bubble wrap and paper and tape and boxed them the best that I could and hoped for the best that they wouldn't get too bumped up along the way. So now here we are and they're all in one place but they're taking up an inordinate amount of space on the shelf and I need to get them unwrapped and experience them again for the first time. Some of them I have probably never even taken out of the shrink, shrink wrap. So I'm really excited to do that. So we're just gonna pick one. Maybe in the future you can pick ones for me, but let's see. Okay, I'm going with, oh my gosh, this one's really heavy. Okay, so here's the part I'm actually the most worried about in this process, which is the actual taking the books out of the plastic wrap safely. Also, I'm sure that this is just gonna make some horrific noises on video. But, you know, I have like a fear of video, which is weird because I've spent a lot of time on stage. I have a theater minor in my college degree and I am um, a singer-songwriter. The video, for some reason, I was just discussing it the other day with a friend and um, people just get wooden on video, even if they're great in every other setting. I don't know that I'm wooden, but I don't know if I feel like a totally real boy either. And so in college, I had this video class. It was the only class I ever dropped in college. Like, you know you have those bad dreams sometimes about like a class in high school or college that you haven't been to all semester and now's the test. And you're like, I haven't been to this class at all. That was the first time I took a video class. And I was just in so far over my head. So then I took it again, like a year later, with great determination. And, uh, and I did okay, but just the whole, I'm really good at audio editing and I'm, I can script, I can sing, but the idea of continuity between different takes of a video just blows my mind. Like I was doing, I just shoot a chess game, which I guess is like a common thing that you do in a uh, student video. And I realized after I shot it that the paper towels had jumped across the table that the chess was being played on. And I think of myself as a very detail oriented, obsessed kind of person and I hadn't even noticed. And so it's just so many variables to take care of on video. Um, so now you can see how I've kind of deli wrapped. I think this might actually be more than one book. Let's see. Oh, some good ones. Okay, so the first one I've unwrapped is the variant cover of JMS, I'm terrible at his last name, Straczynski, J.M. Straczynski's run on Thor. So th this is a fantastic book. And largely with uh, Oliver... Olivier, is it Oliver Olivier? Coypel on art. I mean, we're going to discover in the course of the series that I don't know how to say any of these people's names. Uh, I'm kind of like a toddler. My, or I'm teaching my four-year-old to read right now. She's quite good, but she kind of looks at the first word or the first letter and the last letter of a word and goes like, C C O I P E L uh, Kapulski. She she doesn't doesn't actually sound out the words in between, and that's how I am with creator names. I wonder where she learned it. So. This book um, is fantastic. So the story is that Thor had actually been through a Ragnarok at the end of his 1998 run, which was post Heroes Reborn, which is when Marvel sent all of their major Avengers and the Fantastic Four off to a pocket universe. Thor came back, had a nice long run, some of which is about to hit Omnibus for the first time, and then at the end went through Ragnarok and disappeared, really. It was somewhat unprecedented. It was the beginning of this period of Marvel sending their big hero heroes away um, a little while each. And Thor was at the bat for that. And it was right around the time of Avengers Disassembled too. So I think it kind of got swept up in the disassembling-ness of that as well. And uh, when he came back, it was a really big deal. He's a marquee hero. And JMS was writing that book. And the conceit was that he came back, uh, but that Asgard's gods or I guess you can think of them all as gods, had kind of been scattered because they had all died and Thor had to kind of reawaken them. That's how I remember. I remember reading this in my bed in our old room in Philly, but it's a gorgeous book. Uh, Koibel's art is just magnificent. And it's just, it has the female Loki, which is an 
awesome twist on Loki. It's just great. I, it's really a good one. The, the one thing is that um, JMS kind of leaves the book rather abruptly, and Kieran Gillen, who's one of my favorite writers, takes over um, and does an amazing wrap-up. Kieran Gillen is fantastic at picking up strings of other people's plots and crossovers and things. But that run has not hit OHC or Omnibus. And then after that comes Matt Fraction's run, but also Gillen going over to Journey into Mystery and doing the Kid Loki stuff, which is brilliant, which hit Omnibus this year. But there's still no oversized book of the in-between Gillen stuff. It's just, it's awful. So this is this is hard to find at this point. And this is actually the alternate cover, um, I believe, by Michael Turner. And uh, I will admit I paid a premium for it. I think Koipel's cover, uh, which is this one, <laughs> on the main Omnibus, the work kind of just looks like a weird frog. Koipel's faces are sometimes like that for me. And so I just wanted the Turner cover. But luckily I got that before it was too far out of print. So let's see what else is in here. Oh, I guess we're doing some hardcore Trinity Avengers. So this is the pair of Matt Fraction, Iron Man oversized hardcovers. Um, the first one's actually briefly marketed as an omnibus, but it's not an omnibus. It doesn't say omnibus on this line. And it's not really omnibus length, it's 19 issues. I mean, there are omnibuses that are shorter than that, but um, this is not one. So let's see, what was the context of this one? So this was like post-extremist, post-Civil War, um, and Tony Stark had kind of, yeah, it's Dark Reign, so it's even also post-Secret Invasion. And Tony Stark kind of was a, almost the bad guy of the Marvel Universe in a way at this point. He had kind of been on the wrong side of the fight with Cap in Civil War. And then he um, had kind of been usurped by Norman Osborn and his Dark Avengers. And so Iron Man not only went through all that, but also was going through sort of like a... Sorry, this is like me being wooden on video. I'm looking at myself and like wondering if I'm giving you too much chest here. Um... He kind of is going through a personal breakdown as well. I, I can't tell you that I really remember the details of this run too well, other than it has a lot of Maria Hill being pretty good. I do like Matt Fraction, Maria Hill, better than Bendis. And just that it's a, it's a fast read. It just really, really goes by quickly, and it's really delightful. Now, these two OHTs do not finish out the run. Um, this run it goes from 1 to 33, and then shortly thereafter, the Iron Man numbering skips to 600. And um, they haven't done an oversized version of that yet. Or is it 500? 500. And they haven't done an oversized version of that yet. And it probably isn't coming at this point unless they like put these back into an omnibus together. And then that would be a volume two. So it's far away from ever happening. Uh, and the run gets a little weaker at that point because I think Fraction is distracted as he's scripting Fear Itself, which is at the beginning of that run. But these are pretty golden. Um, unfortunately, I don't think there's a lot of other collected formats that they're in other than the original trade paperbacks and hardcovers, and these are not the hardest things to track down. Um, but it would be nice to get an Ultimate Collection that basically was the same as one of these books, and so two Ultimate Collections that knock them out. Uh, but highly recommend it. Really good read. And very different if you know Fraction from, like, his indie stuff or from Hawkeye. It's not like that, really, at all. It's very, uh, cerebral Iron Man. Not a lot of bash him up Iron Man. So that's my first bale of comics unwrapped, and I think kind of the fun of this for me is I have no idea what I'm going to open up. And I've written, you know, over 100 pages of guides to almost every major Marvel character, and um, so I've seen all this information, but I don't know if I'm going to remember all of it when I open up the darn book off the wall. So, And I don't have any reference here, so part of the fun for me is opening it up and then trying to explain it to you and uh, recommend it to you. So that's our first bale. Gosh, I guess I get to do like a ceremonial putting on the shelf now. I, I mean, we have to open a lot more books before there's room, but I guess just for ceremony. There you go. My first shelved oversized book. So thanks so much for watching Crushing Comics. Uh, please stay tuned.